Hi guys, what's up? Welcome back to another week of fun, delicious recipes. First of all, thank you so much for tuning in. And if you are somebody who's new here, pretty much like myself, welcome, hi. If you do not know me, let me just introduce myself. I am RJ, I'm a professional pastry chef and a mentor. This channel is all about helping you become a skilled, confident baker so you can expect lots of fun professional recipes coming your way lots of baking tips and tricks and hopefully down the line some more exciting stuff that i cannot sort of talk about right now <laughs> but that's what you can expect from this channel so if you would like to continue getting these videos and watching these videos please make sure to subscribe and maybe hit that bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of these videos in the future it's probably somewhere here i'm not really sure but it looks like the bell so i'm showing you <laughs> and by the end of it if you did enjoy watching this video please make sure to give it a thumbs up and yeah that's all the that's all the introductory part out of the way so let's actually get into today's video which is the fun part so today we're making something really really easy but by the end of it it's gonna be like bomb.com it's gonna be so so delicious so today we're making a very simple panna cotta and you can use this base recipe and sort of branch out into different flavor uh, profiles if you would like this one is going to be a toasted milk panna cotta with some roasted peaches and honeycomb and a beautiful tangy refreshing lemon curd so quite a few components but they're all extremely simple and the final product is wow so good <laughs> so let's actually get started so now if you've never made panna cotta before this is probably the easiest dessert you will ever make in your life but the results are amazing it's quite literally three ingredients for if you add a flavoring to it so usually there's heavy cream sugar and gelatin in there to actually set the custard but today like i said we're making a toasted milk panna cotta so i'm using these beautifully toasted milk powder solids now if you've never tried toasting milk powder before you need to get on that bus train vehicle right now because the results are amazing in fact it's like a very sort of caramelly buttery almost undertone to any of the desserts that you use it in it's very similar to browning butter so you get that you know nutty caramelly flavor essentially so that's what we're doing let me wash my hands <laughs> okay much better um and you can add a little bit of vanilla if you want but i'm gonna just keep it super simple today so the way you make a panna cotta is you put everything together in a pot except your gelatin bring it to a boil add in your gelatin let it cool down and then you set it in whatever mold that you want to set it in today i'm just using these little tiny dessert cups and then we're going to unmold it if you don't want to unmold it you can just leave it set in your mold and then sort of make it not a trifle but kind of like a trifle or a set dessert if you would like so couple of different ways you can go about it but very very easy very very tasty very very impressive <laughs> now first of all before we actually get started with heating our ingredients i've got some gelatin leaves here in my bowl and i'm just going to add really really cold water to first bloom my gelatin whether you use gelatin powder or gelatin leaf you're going to bloom your gelatin so this one as you can see it's very sort of hard right now and i'm going to add really cold water let it sit for five to ten minutes until it softens and then we're ready to use our gelatin okay so i've got my extremely cold water in here and i'm just going to sort of cover the gelatin leaf it, there's no specific amount you can add enough to sort of cover them and if you want you can add, throw in a couple of ice cubes just to keep the water super, super cold anyway this one's good i'm just going to leave it on this side and let that bloom meanwhile we're going to put everything in our pot here so we've got some heavy cream um, if you're from Australia, you can use pure cream or thickened cream works as well. Um, if you're from any other part of the world, you want to use a cream with a high fat percentage. So roughly 35% is a good um, fat content to have in your cream. So I'm adding in my cream here. I've got my toasted milk powder. Oh, that. Even the smell is so good. Oh, I love it. <laughs> 
and there's a little bit of sugar in there, not too much because we do have other sweeter components like honeycomb and roasted peaches. So we wanna make sure that our base panna cotta is not like sugary sweet. So not too much sugar, just a touch to flavor it essentially. And now all of this, I'm gonna put it on the heat let it come to a slight boil, not like a roaring boil, just a slight boil, and then we're ready to add in our gelatin. So make sure you're stirring your cream at all times because the milk powder can catch at the bottom and burn, so you don't wanna keep it idle. And as you can see, it's quite hot. It's almost about to come to a boil. Even if it doesn't come to a boil, it doesn't matter as long as it's over 80 degrees and this looks pretty over 80 degrees. This is good enough. I'm gonna turn this off. So I'm gonna pour my hot cream and milk mixture into back into my jug here and we're gonna give this a blitz using an immersion blender or a stick blender. Um, if you don't have any of that, you can just whisk it. This is just to make sure that there are no lumps of milk powder and everything actually um, gets nicely mixed. And now we're gonna check on our gelatin. So as you can see, gelatin is nice and soft. So I'm just gonna pick up everything, squeeze out that extra water, make sure there's no gelatin that's left. Squeeze out all that extra water and pop it into my hot cream to melt the gelatin and then Use your spatula to stir it around to make sure all the gelatin is melted. Gelatin melts at roughly between 40 to 60 degrees Celsius. And to be extra safe, you can also go ahead and blitz it now. Beautiful. So this just ensures there's absolutely no bits of gelatin unmelted that's left. Again, like I said, if you don't have an immersion blender, just use a spatula and that should be good enough. Okay, so this is good. We're ready to fill in our molds. So just let my uh, mixture cool down for a little bit and I put a cling wrap on the surface of my panna cotta mix just to get rid of any air bubbles because we don't want any air bubbles when we pour it into our cups here. So just remove it and you can see no more air bubbles, so great trick so that you don't get any air bubbles. Or you can strain it, but it's just handier. Okay, so I'm just gonna tap it out, make sure there are absolutely no air bubbles, and then we're gonna start pouring into our molds. At this point, you can weigh it up if you would like, or you can just freehand it. This is for home purpose, so I'm just gonna freehand it. Okay, so we got three, not bad leave that out and I'm just gonna leave this to cool at room temperature just for five minutes and then we're gonna put it in the fridge to completely set okay in the fridge they go for roughly two to three hours okay so now that our panna cottas are setting in the fridge let's get started with making our lemon curd now this lemon curd recipe is incredibly easy very very simple and very versatile super refreshing and super tangy just how I like my lemon curd if you would like, you can swap it out for any other citrus fruit or passion fruit, maybe, if you would like, but that's up to you. This one, super easy. You chuck everything in the pot except your butter, cook it out, add in your butter, and that's it. So super, super easy, simple, straightforward. Let's get on with it. So I've got my pot here because I'm gonna cook it in the pot directly over the heat. There is a different method of doing it over a double boiler, but we're not gonna do that today. We're gonna do it as is. I've got my beautiful lemon in here and I've got a microplane or a zester. Um, so we're gonna just zest one lemon first and then we're gonna get the juice out of it. Beautiful, so zest of one lemon in and then I'm gonna just take the same lemon to the silver chopping board. I just don't do it till the end. So in goes our lemon juice. To this, we're also gonna add in our sugar. And we're gonna give that a whisk first. I'm also gonna go ahead and add in my eggs at this point. So these are whole eggs and yolks. Give that a whisk. 
and we're ready to cook this on the stove. So when you cook curds this way, um, directly over the heat, you just gotta make sure you keep whisking at all times until your curd starts to thicken. So the curd is starting to thicken, which is good. Just make sure you keep whisking it. Once you start to see a few boils, that's a good sign. That means you can take it off. So you can see it's starting to boil. So I'm gonna take it off the heat now and we're gonna strain it. I've got a bowl here with a strainer on top and I'm just gonna strain this. And then we're just gonna pass it through a fine sieve. So once we're done straining, I'm just gonna grab a different spatula and just sort of scrape this sides here as well so we don't lose out on anything. And to this, we're gonna add our cold butter while the curd is still hot so that the heat from the curd sort of melts all your butter. And this adds a really nice a mouthfeel and lusciousness to your lemon curd. So keep whisking that until all the butter is nicely melted and combined and then our lemon curd is ready. Just gonna transfer this into a smaller bowl. Beautiful, look at that. So I'm just gonna put some cling wrap on the surface of my curd here, not on the top of the bowl, but on the surface of the curd because my curd is still a little bit warm. Um, so just so we don't get any condensation, we're gonna put it on the surface. And that's it. In the fridge, this goes to set completely. So our panna cottas are setting, our lemon cut is in the fridge. So the last and final component we're gonna make today is our honeycomb. Now, I don't know what your thoughts on honeycomb are, but I've had a lot of honeycomb and I've had a lot of crappy honeycomb. And I can safely say that once you have this particular honeycomb, you are going to be a convert if you already don't love honeycomb because this one is made with a real honey, which surprisingly not a lot of honeycombs do have real honey, which to me that boggles my mind. So it's made with real honey and it's incredibly, incredibly delicious. It's not super sweet because of how sort of dark we take our sugar, not really dark, but how far we take our sugar. So because of which there's a very slight sort of bitterness, not really bitterness, but it's not as sweet because the sugar is nicely caramelized. And because we add a pinch of salt to this, so you get a really nice saltiness to the end of it. And because we use real honey, you get the flavor of actual honey, which is why it's super important to use really good quality honey. Please don't use shit honey. Try to get your hands on, you know, kind of like the best honey you can find, or at least a decent range honey, um, just to flavor your honeycomb that much better. Again, super easy. We're gonna put everything in our pot except our bicarb, which is what sort of aerates it and gives it those air bubbles. Um, so except our bicarb, we're gonna put everything in our pot, cook it to 160 degrees Celsius. So you're gonna need a thermometer for this. 160 degrees Celsius, once that comes to the temperature, we add in our bicarb, whisk it, and put it away in our uh, little ring that I've prepared. So, I'll show you. But again, super easy. You're just gonna be a little bit careful so that you don't splash yourself. But other than that, it's very, very easy and very, very straightforward. I promise you, you're gonna absolutely love this particular one. Okay, so I've got my pot here. I've got my measuring scale, weighing scale. <laughs> so first up, what I'm gonna put is glucose syrup. Now, again, you don't have to make your own honeycomb. You can buy store-bought honeycomb. Uh, but what's the fun in that? So <laughs> we're gonna use some glucose syrup for this recipe. And the best way to use glucose is just wet your hands and dive into it. I know it looks very uncomfortable, but trust me, this is the best way to get it off without it sticking everywhere. You can try using a spoon, but it's just gonna be a whole mess. So this is the personal best recommendation I would give you. And it's incredibly easy. And you can just wash off your hands, guys. Like, come on. Okay, so I've got my glucose in. I'm gonna quickly wash my hands. And then we're gonna add in our honey. So just... Then we've got our sugar. And just a touch of water. Okay, so we're gonna put this on the stove and get this cooking to 160 degrees Celsius. 
and while that's happening make sure you've got a tray prepared with either a ring or a container or something that's lined with paper so that once your honeycomb is ready you're ready to transfer it i would recommend having something narrower and taller just so you get nicer air bubbles um, or like taller air bubbles rather than having something a bit more so flat and wide because it's going to fall flat a little bit so that's why it's better to use something narrow and tall so i've got that prepared as well and i'm going to keep that on the side and i've got my bicarb and salt ready to go as well so i'm going to keep that handy with me here got myself a whisk and a thermometer and we're ready to cook this so as you can see our sugars are bubbling now you do not want to stir this otherwise our sugar will crystallize and right now, if I take the tem, it's at 139 degrees Celsius at this point. So it's very close to 160. So I'm gonna keep taking the tem because it's so shallow, it cooks a lot faster. And I'm not touching my pot bottom, I'm just spending it in my sugar liquid so that I get the correct temperature. So this is at 160. Oops, so I'm gonna take this off the heat. 160, quickly add in that bicarb, mix it, you can see it's bubbles, and you wanna work fast and put it in. Look at that, look how beautiful and airy that honeycomb looks. I don't know if you can notice, but it still sort of is growing a little bit, which is good. And that's all done for a honeycomb. Now the key to making a really good honeycomb and making sure those air pockets don't actually deflate is to not touch your tray. Just don't touch it. Just leave it alone. Let it come to, um, or let it cool down at room temperature. I haven't even touched the tray to like rotate it or any of that. So just, just leave it be and you're gonna get a beautiful, almost fluffy honeycomb. So that's it. I'm gonna let this cool at room temperature for roughly half an hour to an hour. Meanwhile, our panna cottas are setting in the fridge and our lemon cut is chilling as well. So once everything is ready, I've already roasted my peaches. All the components are ready. And once this cools down, we are ready to plate up. Now that all the components are ready, we are ready to plate up. By the way, here's the honeycomb that has been cooling down for roughly an hour now, so I've just sort of taken it off the paper and you can already look at these beautiful air pockets, so we're ready to cut into this as well. I'm gonna cut it when we actually plate it so that it doesn't get soggy, and then you can store this in the freezer. Cool, let's get on with it. So first we're gonna unmold it, so I'm gonna take one of our panna cotta, you can see it's nice and set. So I've got a bowl of really hot water here, so I'm just gonna dip my panna cotta in this for a few seconds to up to a minute to sort of release the panna cotta from the sides and then i'm gonna take a knife and just run it real quick grab our tray Beautiful, so that's out. I'm gonna pipe a little bit of lemon color. Oh my God, would you look at that? That looks beautiful. Look how pretty, fancy and eclectic that looks. That vibrant, peachy, orange that's coming from the peaches. Oh, and it smells incredible. I wish you were in my kitchen right now because that roasted peaches aroma is beautiful and that nice bitter honeycomb is coming through. Oh, so good. I honestly can't wait to try this. So just you know, dig into this. So you gotta get every, um, component going here, so I'm gonna get some, a little bit of peach, a little bit of that, and then 
obviously a panna cotta which all oh, cuts so beautifully oh god that that is 10 out of 10 for flavor because it's so well balanced there's such a nice creaminess and obviously like the caramelly undertones coming from the panna cotta and that sort of lingers in your mouth a little bit longer obviously because it's a lot richer and there's really like that luscious mark to it so it sort of lingers around but there's that freshness that comes through with the lemon curd and the peach and then you've got that ending note of honeycomb and the chewiness just sticking in there oh this is so good honestly this is my new favorite flavor pairing ah oh, so good you know what, I'm actually going to just go sit down and eat this in peace, but there you go. This was our toasted milk panna cotta with roasted peaches, lemon curd, and a beautiful salted honeycomb. Only four components, but you get a beautiful, beautiful dessert at the end of the day. If you're like me and you're in Australia right now or anywhere in the Southern Hemisphere, this is a perfect, perfect dessert for you make. Maybe for Christmas? I mean, I don't know. That's definitely going to get you a lot of points with your family or your friends so definitely want to add to your list if you want to impress people and it's honestly incredibly easy for components like there's not a whole lot to it so definitely give this a try you can find the full recipe on my website at myyummyspatula.com i will leave a link in my description box so you know where to find it and like i said if you did enjoy this video make sure to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so that you don't miss any future videos and that is it for today's video i will see you guys next week but until then happy baking and see you bye